Hi there, welcome back to the new ClickSense tutorial video and in this video we were going to talk about the month start and month end function. So this month start and month end function is very useful in doing the date manipulation which is related to dates as uh, the month date. So for example, if you have let's say 20th January and uh, you just want to calculate how many days it has spent from the start of the day or let's say you want to calculate that how many days are still remaining in the month and if that is what your need is month start and month end function is really really helpful also in certain scenarios uh, uh, you know developers use it to really check whether the date is falling within the month based on the month start and month end all right so how you can do that is uh, by using the small data where we have this uh, dummy invoice data and in this invoice data we will going to create based on these dates what is their respective start month and end month values and once you have those values you can do whatever calculation you need as per your requirement so over here um, i will say month underscore start underscore end just to give it a table name and then i will say load uh, star that will load all the columns which is the invoice id and invoice date and then we will say month start so in month start you have uh, three the two basically parameters uh, these are like the default one uh, sorry the mandatory one like the date for example the invoice date and the period number which will be uh, basically the the period in which you want to evaluate so let me just take it again over here so what i'll specify is basically i and we date over here and zero that means the current month or the current period based on the date that we are specifying so we will call it month underscore start underscore date let's specify the month end as well month end and inv date comma zero as month and date resident is our temp table and uh, then we can simply drop the table temp because we have all its columns in this particular table along with the two new columns so i'll hit save load the data close it come over here create one table at the dimension which is invoice state this is our base state so i'll just expand that add one more column of dimension and the dimension it will be the month start so for 28th of march the start date is first of march similarly for 10th december it's first of december and so on and so forth similarly you can add one more dimension for month end and here you will find the month end detail for the respective date columns now think about this when you have uh, all of these month start month end and values then you can calculate based on the arithmetic operations uh, whatever calculations that you want to do for the purpose of your business analysis uh, say for example you want to create a kpi and things like that so that's about how you can utilize the month start and month end and before i move on i will just tell you that uh, this zero indicates one minus one indicates the previous one so let's just try to do that and maybe i will do plus one over here which is like the next month information so i will just load the data close it come to analysis and now you will see for 28th of March, since we have given the minus one as a parameter, it has gone to the previous month. And that's why it is saying the start date of the previous month, which is 1st of Feb. And in case of end month end, we actually moved on to the next month. So 28th of March. So the next month is April and the month end date is 30th April. In that way, if uh, any of your calculation uh, in which you are required to move back and forth into the month based on the conditions then you can go ahead by just changing these parameters 
So that's about how you can use it, make it flexible as per the needs of your calculation and uh, achieve the desired business metric. So that's about it and I'll meet you in the new video, the new topic.